NASA's InSight spacecraft landed on Mars in November 2018, carrying with it one of the most sophisticated seismology packages ever launched into space. InSight's aim is to better understand the structure, evolution and properties of the Martian interior. And before landing, we expected that a substantial fraction of the Mars quake signals that the spacecraft saw would come about from impacts of meteorites onto the Martian surface, producing signals which would propagate through the planet and be detected by InSight. It's now been two years almost since we began listening for signals, and despite recording a number of Mars quakes, we have not unambiguously identified any signals that are consistent with the impact of meteorites onto the surface. Detection of these signals would be of enormous interest. If we both have seismic detection by insight and an independent set of constraints on the crater's size, its location, and the time that it formed that we get from orbital imagery, we can check the models of the Martian structure and our understanding of how signals from impacts propagate through Mars independently from just using seismic measurements. As such, there's a real interest within the InSight team in trying to detect an impact seismically. Whilst we don't seem to be having an enormous amount of luck with impacts that are natural, we do have artificial impacts that happen on Mars every now and then. And those are the entry, descent, and landing sequences of spacecraft that we send here from Earth to Mars. The next entry, descent, and landing, or EDL event on Mars, will be from the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover, and that's happening in February of next year. This poster looks at whether the seismic signals from that EDL event may be detectable by InSight. And as I mentioned earlier, those would be of enormous use and interest for independently checking some of our understandings of the structure of Mars and the way that waves propagate through its interior. We consider three separate bits of the EDL signal that will produce seismic um, excitation. These are, first of all, the shock wave produced by the spacecraft decelerating as it passes through Mars's atmosphere. The shock wave will decay to a linear wave, which will propagate through the atmosphere as infrasound. Second, we consider the seismoacoustic coupling of this shock wave into the ground, which will propagate through the ground as body and body waves once the energy impacts upon the surface. The third case is the impact of the two spacecraft balance mass devices into the surface at hypersonic velocities, which will produce waves which propagate away from that site. In the case of the first of those three, the propagation of the acoustic wave from the decay of the shock wave through the atmosphere, we undertook ray tracing modeling, which tracks the propagation of sound waves through Mars's atmosphere, accounting for the wind structure and stratification. It turns out that at the time and location of Mars 2020's landing, the atmospheric structures are such that the sound waves bounce off the surface and back up into the atmosphere. As such, they won't reach insight and we won't see that particular signal. Similarly, we don't think we'll see a signal from seismoacoustic coupling of that shock wave and sound energy into the ground and producing a wave that travels to insight because the coupling from the atmosphere to the ground is going to be very weak. The third case, however, the impact of the spacecraft balance masses at a speed of 4,000 meters per second into the ground will create a substantial crater several meters in diameter and produce body waves that will propagate through the planet. The uncertainties on the amplitudes of those body waves are quite significant. Because we've never seen an impact seismically before on Mars, we have no way of calibrating them. However, using data from the Earth and the Moon, we produce a range of estimates for what the velocity of that wave will be, how much it will move the ground by the time it's propagated to insight. The upper end of that estimate suggests that we might see the signal from the balance mass impact at insight if the noise is low enough. That's really exciting for us, and it means we're going to be listening for the signal from that balance mass impact at the time that we know Curio, um, Mars 2020 will be landing. So stay tuned and check back in with us sometime in February or March, and we'll tell you whether we've seen it or not. <laughs>